this website is going to tell you all about the activities, all about the different op options you get, and you can register right here. So guys, we're going to welcome our next guest, uh, and which is Shep Hyken. So Shep, I know you're on the, on, the, um, on the call right now. I'm going to elevate you for just a second. So do you have any questions about the webinar series, please let me know. I'd love to have you guys um, on, on the program, and I've really worked incredibly hard to make this the most relevant and up-to-date program, but easy and non-technical, okay? So I've got your back. We're gonna get through this once and for all and make sure that people find your content. I know so many of you are thought leaders and I wanna make sure that you get found. Okay, so let's move on. I'm gonna promote Shep. Okay. Hey, Heather. Hey, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Let's see, I need to remove that person. There we go. Okay. All right, Chef, let me show your screen here. I, I have nothing, there's there really nothing to show. It's just. <laughs> there's definitely nothing on top. Well, yeah, but you said show my screen. I, I actually, <laughs> I wear a lot of sunscreen, as you can see. And <laughs> Well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. We, I, um, I had an issue with uh, timing today, so I appreciate your understanding on that. We're in great shape. Good, good. So, um, Shep, let's, let's do a little bit of introduction. Uh, tell me a little bit about your business model. I know you're a speaker and thought leader on customer service in uh, businesses, and the reason I wanted you on the call is because I think that it's one thing to talk about all of the online marketing and social media and blogging, but what I don't understand and what a lot of people don't understand is how does the online relationship match the offline relationship and vice versa? And I thought you would be an amazing person to kind of get your perspective on this. Well, thank you, thank you. And I'm happy to talk about it. You, you know, we'll take questions from you, from anybody that's on uh, at this time, and we'll try to give you what you want. But I think there's a direct correlation, there's a direct uh, relationship to what's happening online and offline. Uh, depending upon the type of business you're in, uh, you need to develop. And, and so here, here's the bottom line. We're all trying to create this perception. I mean, you're all about marketing. You're all, and, and your tactics are, are really kind of systems behind the scenes. But on the front side of this, you're creating this perception. Call it a brand promise, if you will. If you do business with me, you're going to feel good because fill in the blank. Uh, not just because of the product that we have. Right. But, it's really at the end of the day, the customer's perception that counts. You can be pushing so hard to create that brand perception, to create that um, feeling that you're a reputable company, that you're an honest company, and we can go on and on and talk about that in just a few minutes, but it is that customer's perception that's going to count. So I guess that's why I'm here today to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think that it's like, when you work with your customers, how much is the online conversation happening with how you are assessing customer service? Is that at the end of the list, at the beginning of the list? I mean, how do you prioritize? So, I mean, most people might think that just putting your URL on your business cards and maybe on your brochures is enough, but how do you take it to the next level? Well, I mean, so there's, there's a bunch of questions within that one question. So yeah. let's start at the beginning. I think we need to define what customer service is because it's not just being nice to somebody if they call you and talk to you. I'd like to take a much larger approach and think of it more of a customer experience. Service is part of that. Somebody has an issue with whatever you're selling or, or has a problem or has a question, uh, they need to feel that, that you're gonna be able to take care of them, but the total experience is what counts. Right. So what I would do is, is I come up with my online strategy, and by the way, just looking at how you are rolling out your new book and, and what you're doing to promote that, yeah. And I'm not just, you know, I'm not kissing up to you. I really am not. Although I could, you know. I'd be happy okay to with that too, Shep. I'd be happy to do that. I'll uh, pay you later. <laughs> but seriously, as, as you start to roll this whole thing out, I think it's important that you identify what you're going to do. You know what your end game, you know what you want. You, in right. your case, you want to sell books, okay? Um, and your, your webinar series and everything else. Yeah. So I would take a look. At every single step that I'm taking, I would, and they call this a journey map. I would journey map this complete process out. I would look at all of those frontline touch points where we're going to be interacting with our customers and clients and say to ourselves, okay, is this easy? 
is this going to be a good experience for my customer? Just for example, how easy was it for me to log in to this Zoom? Of it? I click on a link. It asks for my name, my email address, and, you know, I mean, boom, I'm in. There was very little friction. It was, uh, it was not even intuitive. It was just natural. I mean, it was how easy it was. So how easy are we to do business with? And every single one of those touch points along the way, you need to define the easiness factor, if you will. Right. Easy, not so easy, really difficult. And by the way, anything that's just okay or, or underneath that that's really difficult, we need to turn that around and make that easy because that's going to define how easy you are and will increase your customer's confidence. And at the end of the day, if you are truly selling online and you're actually uh, whatever product you might be selling, at the end of the day, how easy it is is going to directly correlate to how much, how much more sales you might make is a direct of just being easy to do business. Right, right. And I think, I think online customer service has a pretty bad rap. It's kind of like when you call in, press one for this, press two for that. Then pretty soon you're on Google and you're searching for the magic <laughs> bypass code, right, to get to someone. And, and I think that sometimes the, I've built hundreds of websites and worked with hundreds of clients. And, you know, they, they build websites that are almost replicants of each other. Um, you know, right. and, and I think that how, when you're building, you know, about us services, testimonials, contact us, how does that differentiate you from someone who's going from website to website to website? So what would you recommend chef in regard to what should be on your website to get the end result from a customer service mm -hmm. offline? So from, and, and I think it also determines on what type of business you're in. If you're in the kind of business where people are going to be going home after work and doing whatever it is they do, you need to be open those hours. You can't say we're nine to five uh, central time or Pacific time yeah. and expect, you know, I'll give you an example. I bought my daughter a ping pong table and I've used this example over and over in other ways, but think about this. I bought her a ping pong, pong table that had, it was a German ping pong table. So really, <clears throat> number one, the instructions were in German, okay? <laughs> number two, lots of great pictures. Number three, it's German. There's a lot of parts, and it's very <laughs> precise. Right. By the way, great ping pong table, great company. But let's talk about what happened now. So now I'm laying out all the parts and looking at them, and I realize I need help. Now, when does a dad or most people buy a ping pong table and put it together, okay? They're not doing it while they're at work. They're doing it in the evenings or on the weekends. Right. So I try to find the 800 number or toll-free number or any customer service number. And guess what? I found one. And when I called, guess what their hours were? The same hours that I'm at the office, okay? So now we've got a real problem. So let's take a look at Zappos.com as like the extreme example. And I love Zappos. And for those me too. Yeah, most, you know, I'm not being sexist. So most women know Zappos. Some <laughs> men know Zappos. Um, I've taken, have you taken a tour at their Zappos. Vegas location? Have you taken a tour? Oh, yeah, a couple That's of them. That's amazing. If you guys yeah. have a chance, you're in Vegas, get off the strip, go take a Zappos tour. It will change the way you see your business. It will. And, and as it applies to online, what's interesting about online uh, with Zappos is they're really, even though they call themselves an online company, a big percentage of their sales take place on the phone. Okay. Yes. So several things you're doing to create an incredible level of confidence. And by the way, you're going to hear me use this word over and over again, confidence. At the end of the day, we're online. If we're trying to push and promote and sell online, and maybe the product they buy may be a, an item they buy and we ship, or maybe it's us, like myself, uh, I'm online, you go to my website, you hire me or my trainers, or you buy into my online virtual programs. You know, I'm trying to sell you know, a, a different way. Bottom line, they're going to look at this and say, okay, I need to call Zappos. How do I do it? Every single page has a phone number and an email address or a web address. So it's easy to get to. And that is table stakes. How easy are you to find on your own home page? If I want to call you, where do I go? So, and Heather, if you want to bring up your page, let's show them how it could be done. <laughs> My web page? Well, anybody's web page, but I mean, who do you know? You look, pull up Zappos.com and take a look and uh, you'll see their phone number and the way to connect with them is easy. Now, yeah. you use the term online customer service. Um, what, yeah. what, today, that online is what is not done in person, okay? Right. So what's not done in person could be uh, on the website, a frequently asked question. 
uh, section. By the way, I love frequently asked questions for two reasons. They're more than just a, yep, there we go, there's Zappos. They're more than just a customer service um, you know, function. So let's, first of all, uh, real quickly, right there, left-hand corner, right underneath, there it is, 24-7 customer service column, boom. Now, next to it, live help, you can see that. You're gonna hit live chat. Somebody's gonna come up and start talking to you. Now, here's what's fascinating. Sometimes live chat is not really human chat. So it's live because you're interacting with the computer. And you know how when you call and you talk to the virtual response systems, like, you know, just say one for this or two for that, one. Now tell us about your problem. Speak slowly can we, so we can understand you. Right. And that can become frustrating. Just the other day I heard someone in my office yelling, uh, I can't remember, customer support, customer support, <laughs> because the darn thing couldn't understand the two words that she wanted. Right. customer support so that's frustrating but when you're interacting with text versus voice when you type something out the computer can intuitively uh, determine uh, number one even misspelled words the way the questions are being phrased it can determine what you're concerned about what you're questioning about it can anticipate what your questions are going to be based on hundreds if not thousands and tens of thousands of other people who have use this system because it starts to populate all the right answers and, and the way customers phrase. Really cool is that it will also sense when the customer is getting concerned and upset based on the way the customer is typing, phrasing, using exclamation points, yeah. words, whatever, and it will seamlessly flip to a human yeah. to get the interaction that's necessary. So uh, I know Zappos and many other companies um, are using all types of different systems to enhance the customer experience. And uh, even sometimes the computerized system's great. All right, we don't need to leave uh, Rockport advertising <laughs> on, on the screen. If you, although that one's not bad. You know, Chef, uh, could we talk Revolution. A bit of, can we talk a little bit about what, I know from a customer service perspective, I'm, also in, I'm often Googling people's businesses and looking at seeing what the people see when they search. Now, a lot of the times, shockingly enough, the CEOs are in the room and there's a horribly nasty review that shows up. Hate when now, that happens. Yeah, and it happens more than, it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you suggest in regard to, how, how would you, I can tell you how I would approach it, but I really like to see how you would recommend you implement or address that in your company. That is customer sure. service at its finest. Well, sir, number one, uh, expect that you're going to be getting a negative review. It's going to happen. It's not if it happens, it's when it happens. So it's going to happen. Several things. Number one, I want you to think about every review, good or bad, gets a response. Okay? So that's customer engagement, and that's a powerful experience. Any comment, even if it's not truly a review, yeah. should be uh, commented on. So my buddy Jay Bear, who just wrote a book called Hug Your Haters, are you familiar with the book? <laughs> Isn't that yeah. great? And I it's love all that about, book. <laughs> it's all about the online. Hug and, your and, haters. Wow, your that's haters. brave. It's all about that online uh, negative customer response. Those review sites, the person that goes on Facebook and decides to you know slam the company. It's all about how you deal with that. Right. But what happens, in his words, I love this. I wish I would have come up with this. And you know what? If I keep talking about it long enough, maybe I'll forget that it was Jay and I'll take it over. Right. No. <laughs> Isn't that what speakers do? First time I give credit, second time I say someone said, third time. Hey, it's like mine. I always it's say, mine. No. Uh, but no, <laughs> truthfully, what Jay says is that customer service becomes a spectator sport. Mm, as yeah. soon as that negative review goes up, somebody who's interested in the product is going to look at how the company responded. Right. So first thing is respond. And by the way, don't respond in three days or five days or next week. You respond in three to five minutes. Okay, I'll give you a few hours. And even that to me is not enough. I think minutes, not hours, are important. Right. Now, also, you're the kind of company, assuming you are the kind of company that would have and be big enough to have 24-7 type of response. Yeah. I think small businesses like you and I have, I think it's reasonable to expect. And we even tell our clients when they email us in, uh, even to make an initial order, that our business hours are central time, eight to five, and we always get back to people within the, by the next business day at the latest, okay? Yeah. So they have that expectation. 
but we're not the type of business that would need 24 seven customer support. So one so thing back, back to the original uh, idea, yeah. you respond and you respond quickly. And, and what you do is, first of all, you say, you know what, I'm, and I have this whole five-step process, which is basically to acknowledge the problem, apologize, discuss the resolution and, and the fix, do it with the right attitude, do it with a sense of urgency. So those are my five ways of getting it done. So the first thing is you acknowledge, you apologize, and then rather than try and fix it online, you ask the person, can we get offline and fix it? Now, offline may be to a direct message type of situation, or I'm going to call you. I have your information because you're my customer. I'm going to give you a call or, or I direct message you and ask you for your phone number so we can talk about it. Yeah, get it offline this, as quickly as possible because yeah. it can get ugly fast. Real fast. Yeah. But you definitely want to show the world that you responded quickly. Right. Okay. Right. By the way, there's some people that are going to rant, rant, rant. There's nothing you can do about them. That's just what yeah. they want to do. I even had a gentleman from our uh, mutual um association the national speakers association uh -huh. he had a rant one day and I, I i i called the guy up and i said you know hey man you and i are friends why did you go public with this problem of yours which by the way i will be happy to respond but if i do it's going to be um i don't want to say pissing match because that wouldn't be right to say on your show, would it? Oh, of course. Now, no, oh, no, I just no. did, darn it. Yeah, but, it's too late. But that's what it would be. It would be like us just, yeah. you know, saying who's the bigger dog here, you know? And I, I said, and in the end, I will win, okay? So why did you do this? Why did you go public with this right. comment? That, what are you trying to accomplish by, by yeah. posting this? And he said, you know, sometimes I just like to stir the pot a little. And I said, well, thanks for wasting my time, and now I'm going to waste yours. And I basically told him, I said, I know I love to see people come to our association, come to Influence 2015, 16, you know, which is our big conference. I said, but you, I don't want you to come. You're a troublemaker and you're not what our association is about. Wow. And so yeah. handle it offline. Now, if you want to go back and you want to post something about what I just said to you, go ahead. But your <laughs> comment that you made originally is unfounded. And I've got our CEO of our association prepared to step in and take your comment to the level, you know, to just show the world. And, you know, we don't want to get into that. But I, I was, I admittedly, I, I direct messaged them. I called them. I said, you were wrong. I was, I was nicer than I, I'm actually. It feels like you were a little irritated as well. I'm probably sharing with you my inner voice. <laughs> what he heard was, you know what? Why did you have to do that? Right. We're all nice people. But deep down, I was saying, you know, you're a real, whatever. Can't say it. Well, and, and what do you suggest? What tools do you use, Shep, to kind of listen, keep your ear to the ground? on Because a lot of times you won't know what they say, mm -hmm. and you found out later. Um, what, and there's so many different ways you can, you know, everyone has a Yelp account, whether they know it or not. Everyone has a, you know, they can set up Google Alerts. If you guys haven't set up Google Alerts, right. um, make sure to do that. That's Google the account. number one way. Google yeah. Alert is easy. Uh, so, I, yeah. You know, I actually have someone in my office, and you know who she is my secret weapon, yes. takes care of all of this. And we use another program that's even stronger than Google Alerts to try to track every time my name or my company is mentioned. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to something, though, before we leave the concept of it online. Yeah. So I gave you that great example, which probably wasn't so great. But when you're online, comment immediately, pull it offline, then go back and say, thank you for letting me take care of this. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you giving us the benefit of the doubt, having a conversation. I'm glad it's been resolved. And the perfect world, customer comes back and says, yeah, I probably should have called you first anyway. And by the way, many times the reason they're leaving that comment is because they did try calling first or they did try contacting. Uh, you didn't get what, what they wanted, right. which is not good either. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, but you should never have a wheel squeak. Um, <laughs> you know, you can't make everyone happy. It's impossible. No. So here's another, before we get into the Google Alert thing, I want to, yeah. to that point, there was a study done by Northwestern University, and this is the greatest. People want perfect reviews. Every five, five it's always a five-star five review. stars, yes. Do you know that <laughs> a 4.3 average garners a higher, uh, I guess, uh, percentage of sales from customers who look at reviews yeah. than a perfect 5.0? Right. So they determined that perfection is not reality. No. <laughs> so. I'm always happy when I launched my book, Shep. I was actually very excited to get one three 
and about a half a dozen fours because I felt like it it gave a more representative sample of the fact that not all those posts are not my family. Right, right. <laughs> they're, they're a group of people that actually read the book and have given some thoughtful feedback about it. And I think that if you've ever seen a review, you kind of sniff out the ones that are like, they're a little too exuberant about the business and mm -hmm. not really speaking in plain language about what needs to be, what's great, but also what needs to get improved. We appreciate the reviews. And by the way, yeah. you know, you love, I read the back of a book for yeah. reviews, not because I want to see, oh, is this a good book? Uh, let me go see if there's a good review on the back of the book. Of course there is. We, we're not going to put something. I know. Back. Yeah, I'm going to put all, actually, I chose not to put reviews on the back of my book. Because I decided after talking about, I wrote specifically all about how the book can serve business owners. Mm -hmm. I do have the obligatory, you know, you know, quotes that you get for writing a book. But, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't, I look at those and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You called them and had it written, whatever. Well, unless, number one, it's a really credible celebrity or expert that if that person's willing to say something nice about your book, whatever it is. Yeah, take it. sure. Number two. If you can get somebody who maybe they, you don't know who they are, but they come from an industry that, you know, maybe it's obvious they're from a, a retail store and you want a retail store represented. Yeah. If they can say what benefit the book gave them and their business, not how good the book is. Now you're taking those bullet points on the back of your book and you're letting other people kind of give the word of mouth of, of it all. Which right. Is right, right. And by the way, social media, online, customer service, it's all marketing. A friend of mine says his uh, he ran, he was the CEO of Morton's, the steakhouse. Oh, yeah. And he, yeah, so he's a credible guy. I mean, and by the way, Morton's is now owned by Landry's, and they're a different type of company. And I just went there the other night and had a great dinner. Different is, is a really important word because when they were just Morton's owned by Morton's, it just, it had a whole different feel to it. Mm -hmm. Not a better or worse feel, just different. Definitely. And one of the things Tom used to say is he says, I have different definitions of customer service. Number one, customer service is marketing. Our best marketing department is everybody who works and has contact with our guests, okay? That's the most important. If they do a good job, guests are going to walk out and talk. They don't spend, a, at the time at least, uh, the CEO was a conscious choice. We don't spend any money on advertising from the standpoint of radio, TV, newspaper. It's We'll do social media advertising, but that's pretty much, you know, for lack of a better term, almost free uh, compared to these others. It's very low cost. But right. he said no traditional advertising. Our best advertising is our people, our marketing department, which are all those. Number two, he said customer service is also mistakes handled well. Nobody walks out of the restaurant unhappy. There's a problem, yeah. fix it, don't let them go. And right. I think that's a great metaphor for anybody who's doing anything online, uh, on in person. It doesn't matter your marketing. It's like if you see somebody's upset with you, handle it. Handle it well, and hopefully they'll talk about you. Right. Uh, so I know I jumped off of the Google alert. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like my ADD kicked in and we said, squirrel. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to share my screen again because I've got Google Alerts set up, and then we'll talk about your other tool that you like so much, Shep. And um, I wish I could remember the name of it, but it doesn't matter. There's so many. I mean, we, <laughs> we use, um, gosh, I, and every time I say it, uh, Cindy goes, no, that's not. I always reverse the words. But the Google Alert is the basic thing. You put in your name. Uh, here's what I like to put in, not just my name. Uh, I put in my expertise, my topic. So I'm a customer service and experience expert. Uh, yeah, customer service, uh, customer experience, and then I'll also start putting ancillary topics in. I'll also, uh, and it's very powerful, if you want to deliver an amazing service experience to some of your best clients, put their names in a Google alert. Okay, I know we're getting off topic. Or your competitors, just saying. Oh, or your competitors to see what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> really, what we're interested here for this purpose and this question is, when somebody writes or talks about us online, socially, I want to be notified, okay? And that's going to pop up in all types of different alerts. Right. Uh, Facebook, um, my, you know, um, Yelp, uh, any review sites. And by the way, there are review sites. You think of Yelp and, you know, all these, you know, the restaurant sites and the hospitality sites. No, there are review sites for virtually every industry. Right. Uh, they just aren't necessarily 
is well known in public. I mean, I'm sure yeah. that the, the radiator manufacturers probably have some type of a review, a review site. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so here, this is a great page. If you're looking to deliver good customer service, how often? At most once a day? No. Click on that, see, as it happens. That's what you want. You want to know as it happens. And you're going to get Google alerts as your name is mentioned in any, any article, any review, that type of thing. Anything that shows up online. So. Let's see if there's anything we should, uh, here we go, disrupt TV. <clears throat> yeah, here, yeah, here you're looking at uh, uh, different, I mean, I'm quoted throughout different uh, publications. Right, but you'll get an email, or an email telling you that this has now been posted once Google sees it. Right, right. Yeah. And this well, also, make sure that, guys, when you put all this in here, that you put whatever you're tracking in quotes, because that'll give you the direct reference of that particular item. If I put Shep and I put Hiken without the quotes, I would get any reference to Shep and any reference to Hiken. So um, just make sure you use quotes. I also put my book titles in here. Another thing, um, I've watched brand reputation management and done tons of it for years. And one thing we found out is that when people steal, they steal everything. So they steal the entire website. So what, what I recommend that clients do is you take all the body copy off your homepage, you put it in quotes as a Google alert. And what happens wow. is, because this has happened to a lot of my clients, is people just steal. They take it and they'll use it to their advantage. So take the first chapter of your book and put it in here as a Google alert. And if anyone takes your stuff, you'll be the first to know. And that can be another great way to use Google Alerts in a kind of a different way than maybe just by what shows up in Google. That's powerful. That powerful idea. You know, and you mentioned, uh, mentioned you know, put in your competition's name. See what they're up to. Yeah. Uh, but if you put in your clients' and customers' names, if you got really important customers and clients that you deal with, sure. what's really cool is you'll get an alert. And by the way, I would do those as it happens as opposed to getting – a, a big uh, compilation. A and the reason is, is as soon as you see a great article has been written, you, you get the immediate alert. And then uh, what would happen is uh, you would send them an email and says, hey, I saw this. Congratulations. And there's so many times mm -hmm. that I send my clients their articles before their PR company ever sends them their articles. Right, right. Yeah, and it's just a great thing to stay connected with them. Or, you know, I'm tracking right now anyone who says anything about my book. So I will also uh, watch my book titles and make sure that I'm keeping track of what people are saying about that as well. Um, another one is um, there's a couple good uh, social media tracking. Do you have any of those that you use, Jeff? Well, tell me who you, yours are because I, I probably use them and then I'll, I'll uh, again. So here's the thing. <laughs> we have people that do this for me. And they're just in the other office. And again, Heather, you've met my secret weapon. Yeah. And social mention. Yep. Social mention. It's a good um, one. Yeah, social mention is one that we, you can track. It's sort of Google alerts for social media. And you can get notifications and alerts right here. And they'll give you exactly what you want to do in mm -hmm. regard to how to be, you know, how to be um, found for social media posts. Uh, also, if you're using something like Hootsuite or Sprout Social, mm -hmm. you can set up an exact match uh, notifications right. as well. And we're using Hootsuite, but there is another one that we're using and it that it's on the tip of my tongue um and i wish i could remember what it is we social mention hootsuite google alerts and one other drum um, please what's it called drum roll please <laughs> oh drum no it's not called drum roll please. <laughs> not even close right uh, so that's all right uh we'll uh Let's see, maybe Google will help us out. Yeah, social media alerts. All right. And, and uh, let's see, I'm seeing. Uh, also mention Tracker? No, nope, not Tracker. No. Oh, boy, you're moving there so fast. Let's Sorry, honey. Uh, Mention.com? Nope. That's a good one, too, guys. Mention.com is really good. Uh, let's see here. Maybe Get one of those 10 free social media monitoring tools uh, down below. Uh, that, it just hit that, that URL. Uh, did, did, oh, uh, right here? Uh, well, that's six, but the above it is 10. <laughs> I'll take 10. I'll take 10, and I'll hopefully we'll find it. And there, see, there's okay. Kelly Huston. Oh, good. Okay, there's Google Alerts. Next. Technorati. We've actually played with Technorati, but that's not what we use. Addictomatic. That's fun. Yep. 
and uh, what's up? Social mention we use. Yep. Okay. Uh, Hootsuite we use. WordStreamer. I've never heard of that one. Mm -hmm. Hootsuite. Cloud. Well, uh, I don't know. I've never used that for social mentions, but I know cloud is tracking social mentions from really just a few select sources. It's not uh, the complete uh, anywhere your name is mentioned. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. Let's see if number 10 shows up as it. Number 10 is, nope. Hmm. Well, these, are all great. these are all great ideas. These so are maybe, all great. Yeah, maybe you can let me know. Uh, chat, go ahead and chat your assistant, and maybe she can, uh, <laughs> she'll tell you what it is, Jeff. She is. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to hit, uh, we'll, we'll see that. What's so the social name? mention is very interesting, too. And there's also uh, tweet, tweet Beep used to be a part of it on its own side, and now it is owned by Twitter. But you can also set up, um, you can set up automatic notifications through TweetBeep. Uh, it'll tell you anything anyone mentions about you on Twitter. So mm. that can also be helpful as well. Yeah, Twitter, you really want to, anytime somebody does anything on Twitter, it, it happens so fast. Yeah. I want to know who's doing it. And also, I want to engage with that person on Twitter because if they're a, they've got a big following, boom, you're exploding. Right. Uh, it's a great way to explode your network. Well, like during my last interview with SEM Rush, they were live tweeting mm -hmm. all the content. Yep. So that would be that'll be great to go back and see what that looked like from them. And I wonder if they're live tweeting us. They might be. They probably are, actually. They have the kind of social media team that is unbelievable. They are just on it like crazy. And their social media following shows it really. Yeah, okay. I guess I have to log in. That means I have to remember my password. That's okay. It's <laughs> I can always share it out through Twitter later. <laughs> I know. That's what makes me nervous. Yeah. Well, we still have, I'm just super impressed. We still have 21 people who have stayed on for the entire thing. So I'm super impressed by you guys. Thank you so much. If what you, questions do they have? Yeah. So guys, what questions do you have for Shep? Anything regarding the customer experience online or offline? I think we've talked about negative reviews. Um, one thing that I can give just as a, as a, as a caveat is um, I used to work for a company uh, called Video Professor. And Video Professor, they sell these, mm -hmm. they sell these I don't know if you remember these CDs, and it was like, try my product. And he was holding them up next to his, uh, next to his face. And, and so there's things like, you know, Levi sucks and Walmart sucks and Comcast sucks.com. Yeah. And, and so um, I, when we, someone went out, a disgruntled employee went out, bought videoprofessorsucks.com and it ranked under our corporate brand for close to two years. And oh, wow. he, he specifically went off and got bloggers to contribute content to it on a weekly basis. So he was a, a scorched earth sort of guy. And um, it took us, we had, before social media was available, we had to build like eight different sites to push him off the page. So now, you know, it's about, you know, being able to monitor your brand and really own every single spot. So here we have a we have a question here. Yes. Enjoying the clarity of the information. Want to explore my own later, Chef. Great seeing you online. It's been a while since you were here at NSA Las Vegas. That's Sophia. Yep. Hey, Sophia. <laughs> so, what are some of the other big mistakes that that uh, you know um, companies or business, small businesses make around their uh, customer service, both off, offline and online? Well, so so well. I mean, offline we could talk about forever and ever. That's that yeah, but so much of what you do is is online. Yeah, and I mentioned a few important things. One of the biggest things uh, I see small companies do is they try to create this big presence. Big presence means bigger expectations, and be careful what you wish for. Uh, if you really want to create that huge international global presence, but you are one person sitting in a small little second bedroom, if you even have a second bedroom, be prepared to res you know respond as if a global company would. Right. So, and other words, don't create false expectations. That's one I mentioned. Uh, yeah. Be easy to contact. Uh, the quick follow up is really important. You know, recognize uh, the average email from a company. It takes over seven hours for a company to respond, which is just crazy. That is insane. Yeah. So, uh, how many times though have you talked to business owners and I'll say like, where does this email form on your website go? And they're like, well. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so Heather, how big do you think the typical 
person watching the show is company wise small uh, business entrepreneurial um, you know, I speak to Fortune 500 companies and CEOs, so it's a mix of solopreneurs, big marketing directors, okay. and everybody in between. So let's talk about that form. We're a small company. While we have a number of people that work outside, we have three three people that are outside, we have four people in the office. Mm -hmm. When that form comes in that you just referenced, yeah. it goes to everybody. And then it's decided who's going to take it. Okay, And I think that's powerful. So multiple people should get the form. Somebody's gonna be out one day, somebody's gonna be sick, somebody's gonna be at lunch. Make sure that somebody is there to receive the form, if nothing else, to respond and say, so-and-so is gonna be getting back to you when they're back in the office after lunch. Right, or, right. Tomorrow when they're back in. And I think that's, that's a, a pretty powerful technique to use. Uh, and that's easy, because you just set that up. Um, Jeff, other, have you, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you, you, you were, so oftentimes, have you ever had a situation where it was going bad for you? I know you do a bit of travel. Um, have you tried reaching out through social media to get immediate help? And has sure. it worked for you? Yeah, I'm one of the early adopters of uh, Twitter for social care. Um, my favorite story is that I wasn't, you know, it's like, when do you, when do you contact them to find out your fights, uh, you know, being canceled? And you right. call and they tell you, it's, you know, now I call the executive platinum desk when there is, you know, on American Airlines, and it, on a bad time, they will still tell you, your wait is 60 minutes, we'll call you back. And that's, you know, at the high level status. So mm -hmm. my favorite example, though, is I'm up in the air, <laughs> circling the Dallas airport, knowing I'm going to miss my connection below because captain comes on and says, this, this is what he says, uh, we're delayed. And by the way, we're not the only ones circling up here. Every flight is delayed. So don't worry, your flight's delayed too. Well, I go online, I check, and guess what? My flight is the only one that's not delayed. Oh, excellent. The entire airport. Excellent. And then panic ensues, right? Well, not so much panic, but I really don't want to spend a night in Dallas. So what do I do? I go on Twitter and I direct message American Airlines. Now, uh, not that long ago, if you wanted to direct message a company, you had to actually follow them first so they could follow you back if they wanted to and respond. Well, today you don't even have to do that. Mm. Uh, Twitter actually is a real customer service channel, and they've set up uh, tools that companies can use at no charge, by the way, to uh, create a better experience. But I direct messaged American Airlines. I said, um, um, I guess my frequent fire number, I put it in there circling Dallas, going to miss my connection in St. Louis, please help, okay? Yeah. 10 minutes later, we protected you on the following flight. Wow. Done. Wow. And it's happened more than once. That's incredible. Well, so that's a good, good thing. They've got it down. And you know, I also, by the way, customer service, telling me they're gonna call me back in an hour is a great option, rather than making me wait on hold. So yeah. I, I just, um, uh, Shy Burger is the guy's name from Fonolo, uh, F O N O L, uh, something like that. Uh, Fonolo, Fonolo. I just interviewed him. Uh, great guy. I've known Shy for a number of years. I still can't pronounce his company's name, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But Shy, Shy's awesome. And what his company does is create that option for when people are on hold. We want to give them the option of number one, letting them know how long the hold is going to be. Right. Or number two, give them the option of hanging up and letting them call back. Just by entering your number, they'll call back. The key is they call back at the right time. If you tell me it's gonna yeah. be an hour, don't call me back in an hour and a half. Call me back in 45 or 50 minutes, Right. 59 minutes, <laughs> but not an hour and three minutes, because now you've missed the deadline. I had a really interesting thing happen to me. I was calling Apple over something I was had a question on, and you actually got to select the on hold music that you would like to oh, hear. Oh, that's cool. And I thought that was unbelievable. I thought that was so cool because you know you're going to wait. They told you exactly how important you are and how long you're going to wait. Mm -hmm. And either they'll call you back or you can listen to this variety of music and it would give you this whole list of, of, uh, of ones you could purchase. And what was interesting is when I got on the phone with them, I was, um, my, my keyboard stopped working. I got a brand new MacBook that I'm in love with, but somehow the keyboard was not functioning right. And I got on the phone. He's like, take it into an Apple store and we'll replace it. No questions asked. So I'm like, this is not going to happen. So I went into the Apple store and said, here's my problem. And literally within five minutes, they had a new Apple in front of me, brand new, with no questions asked and said, have a nice day. So, so I, yeah, I was cool. like, can I hug you now? Is that weird? 
um, because I was like almost in tears because I knew that I'd done some Googling and to fix them was like $750 and it was, it was crazy. Right. So they're, they're, they're a great company. And my, my Apple store story is uh, my daughter is getting ready to go to Europe for an internship and, in, and, in, uh, and her semester abroad. Uh -huh. Literally, as we're going to the airport, she drops her phone and it shatters. The only communication <laughs> we're going to have yeah. with her is with that phone. Oh my gosh. Oh no. So we call the Apple store closest to us. And well, first of all, we get on, we, I, I'm not giving you the right information. We go online, the Apple store closest to us, get to the Genius Bar, whatever, to set up an appointment. Can't do it. Both, so we yeah. go to the next one. Then I get smart. I call up Apple. I tell them the story, and they create the appointment for me. They make sure that when I walk in, they tell me who to ask for, that I'm talking to a person who does this, and they have to call me back. And by the way, by now we're panicking because, you know, me, I like to get to the airport super early, and so I was making my – at least we had that buffer zone that I had to be at the airport two hours early. Right. Turns out we got to the airport maybe about an hour early, but we had everything taken care of that we needed at the airport. But that extra hour was spent going to the Apple store, and rather than having a wait in line, they had somebody waiting for me, ready to deal with it. Wow. And just like that. That's the way it needs to be done. That's the way it should be done. And, you know, I think a lot of people maybe, they may feel uncomfortable with Twitter or Facebook, but I have been incredibly impressed how these bigger businesses have really stepped up their engagement on social, especially in travel. I think sometimes the biggest problems show up when you're traveling. <laughs> so what's the reasonable period of time that you would wait before you start panicking that nobody's paying attention to their social feed? Or I get angry. Mm -hmm. Or you get angry, which I think would coincide with about the time you realize nobody's going to help you. Yeah, and it wasn't very long. You know, I think social media has created a, a window of about eight seconds, right? I mean, it's just, you mm -hmm. tweet and then you wait. How long is too long? And you keep checking it and refreshing, seeing if they've responded yet. Um, I, I usually like to think at least within 10 minutes, and that would be an eternity. I think that's a great, that's a reasonable time frame. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I won't tell you the name of the hotel, but it was, I'll give you the initials, MGM in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I don't I know, I'm going to try to guess on that one. I think yeah, that, you know. I walked into the MGM and I was there for a conference and I, I, I knew I had an interview uh, with the press in about three hours after I walked in the hotel. Right. And I walked into hundreds of people checking in. Hundreds. <laughs> so I went to the end of the line. I said, how long is this? He said, at least an hour and 15 minutes. I go, an hour and 15 minutes? Are you, are you going to make me – this is my first impression of my experience. And Well, we're busy today. What do you mean you're busy today? You're Las Vegas. You're busy every day. And you have conferences with – Hundreds of thousands of people coming into the city, if not millions, all of the time. They, I don't know what happened. So I got in the line because I had no choice. And I, they weren't suggesting that I go to the VIP room and get checked in there. Right. But, uh, so I go online and I tweet out, direct message to the MGM, please help. I have a press interview to talk about customer service. Ironically, I'm not receiving good customer service right now. Uh -oh. I'm standing in a line that they've said would be at least – well, well over an hour. And I waited and I waited. <laughs> and I finally, after about an hour and 30 minutes, got to the front of the line. Ugh. No, And I, by the way, I tweeted out a couple of times since, please help. Really, I'm serious. Nothing. Nothing. And uh, yeah. end of story. And here I am telling you about it. And I really would love to work with the MGM. There is maybe, <laughs> but they may not like working with me today as of now. <laughs> I was, uh, have you ever seen the Broadmoor in Denver? There is. And Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. There yeah. is the yeah, and that's not too far from you, is it? No, no, no. It's just down the street. It's one of my favorite places in the world. The and, best. Yeah, I was in there the for the world. Yeah, and I think in the world, it's not just the best in Denver or Colorado. Yeah. Springs. No, it's incredible. It's world class. So I was and, sitting outside. They have that outside bar area there, and it was a little chilly. And I, I was checking in, and I was, uh, uh, you know, um, at res you know, putting them at response in my in my tweet, and I said, God, a, a cup of Earl Grey right now would just make my life perfect. Just kind of, just kind of, because I have a, a huge Earl Grey fan, and uh, I, and I'm, I didn't even really think about it. I was just kind of sitting out there, and and pretty soon I hear someone saying, Miss Lutz, Miss Lutz, because no one pronounces my last name right, and I'm like, Yes, and they're like, Here's your Earl Grey tea. Would you like cream or sugar? And I almost fell out of my chair, almost fell out of my chair. Yeah. And I was like, you guys rock. I cannot believe 
that you watched your social media so intently that you could actually deliver deliver some tea to me. And, a little, uh, little touch. I and thought so that was incredible. a great way to create. So they were what you you tweeted yeah. that out right now. I did that's great. Yeah. So here's here. You ready for this? This is a great tip. If you want good service, okay. But let me tell you what some of the best hotels do. They watch, uh, if, especially if you have a high clout score, which we don't talk about clout nearly as much as we used to. No. But uh, it used to be high clout score. They pay close attention to customers or guests coming in. Right. And if and so one day I tweeted, "Just landed. Can't wait to meet my buddy." Whatever. And the hotel knew. I didn't even mention the hotel's name. But when I walked in, ah, Mr. Hyken, you've made it. And like, how did you know I was coming in this late? We followed your Twitter feed. And we saw you said you just landed. Wow. And I didn't even mention the hotel. But now I get smart. I mention the hotels that I'm staying at. And they love when I do that. Oh. Staying in a really cool hotel. Like, I can't wait to stay at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, whatever their hashtag is or, or handle. Uh, you make sure that's included in it because they're watching. I love when my clients put me up in world-class resorts or hold meetings in world-class resorts. Yeah. And you walk in there and it's just, they treat you so much better. They, they do. You're going social. It's like when I checked into Cosmopolitan, I'm a platinum with that, with Marriott. And I came in and I was in the regular line, hour and a half line sitting in there. Yep. And one gal came around and was asking people if anyone was platinum. And I said, I am. And they literally took me out and walked me to like this silver enclosed glass area where they, they check me in by iPad and they had a drink in my hand. And, you know, I'm like, there, wow, wow. I mean, I was just like, usually platinum get, maybe gets you like an extra gift at check in. You know, a bottle of water. It doesn't get, yeah. here's that's your complimentary want. cookie and bottle of water. Mm. And like, boy, that platinum elite status really paid off right now. <laughs> you know, and, and well, and I think that's great that they do that. I wonder how the people felt who weren't platinum. Yeah, yeah, I got some looks for sure. Yeah, is anybody here platinum? I would have raised my hand even if I wasn't. <laughs> right. Platinum, what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm platinum on American Airlines, okay? Right, Doesn't right. it have anything to do with this? No. <laughs> right. What, are you going to stick me back in the line now in front of all these people? Are you going to embarrass me? No, they don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I always feel bad, especially in TSA, because I have, I have everything to get through TSA in five minutes. I've got clear, I've got the, the, the TSA trusted traveler, and you know the days like Mondays when you go through there and you just breeze through, and boy, you get some very interesting facial right. expressions when you go through there. So, yeah. Well, how about yeah. this? TSA has a great product, but they have to be, and I recognize, they tell you that once in a while, you're going to be randomly pulled out. They yeah. make that clear. Yeah, but yeah. When you show up to an airport and the TSA lane is shut down because they're short-staffed or whatever. Yeah. There, there's a customer service issue. Um, so I'll, yeah. I'll defend them when somebody says, you know what, I don't always get it. Well, that's because your name must be on some list or, or maybe you're just unlucky. <laughs> you know? But they say that about one out of every five or ten times you're going to get pulled out. Okay. Right. Right. But that's different than showing up and the line not being open. Right. Um, so tell me just one last thing. Um, if you were going to pick one thing that most business owners don't do with their online presence, what would that be, Shep? One thing that they could take away and do right away. One, one thing with their online presence. I think yes. we've covered that. I think one of, probably the most important thing is they need to do the Google alerts and yeah. mentions yeah. And, and keep an eye out for anybody who's saying anything about you and then comment back to everybody. Social media is exactly that. It's social. And that means there's a conversation. Engage the customer. It's two-way conversation, not just one. And by the way, if you choose to use uh, you know, social media for marketing, think about it in terms of content marketing versus marketing message marketing or sales message marketing. Right. Because good content marketing will sell a company. Uh, aggressive sales messaging will kill a company. Right, right. And also, I always think of when you look at a website and you're like, where are your social media icons? Are they at the top right-hand corner where they should be? Or are they in, you know, way in the footer, right? There's, there's social media and anti-social media at the bottom. <laughs> the bottom. I like that. That's good. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> there's so many ways to do it wrong and do it right. We really need to have somebody like you, you know, navigating our waters for us. Well, I, you know, I'm thrilled that to, you took the time today. And I'm just, I'm, I, have I gotten a book in the mail to you yet? 
Uh, I know it's on its way. It is. Yeah, it's a, a whole briefcase is on its way to you. I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you, Shep. I hey, adore you. And it's you great are just to great. hang with you, and I, I hope everybody enjoy the show. Thanks, Jeff. Have a great rest of your day, and Thanks. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much to Shep. I hope you're all enjoying the show. Um, we are going to take a quick break, and then our next guest is going to be um, Mike uh, Roberts from SpyFu, and he's going to walk us through. We have a free 90-day uh, access pass for you as well on SpyFu. So um, I'm going to just step away for a minute. I will be right back. And we are going to give me about five minutes. Guys, get a coffee break, uh, grab something to eat, and then we'll go. If you want to check out the uh, URL here and check out my webinar series, that would be awesome. So give me five minutes, and I'll be right back.